Hey there again, folks. Welcome back to my Let's Play of Remember Eleven: The Age of Infinity. For a good story, I did just uh, discover something quite important. Whenever I restart my computer, the settings change on my webcam. Specifically, the microphone, which is why you guys were deafened a few episodes ago. I'm glad I. I'm glad I. Uh, I'm glad I caught that. <laughs> so, yeah, it, I always go by if the thing is moving, whether or not my voice is being captured and the recording and all that good stuff. Uh, with Fraps, I always do a test beforehand because, well, that one's hard to, you know, harder to measure. But, but yeah, so I'm glad I caught it. Hopefully, the hopefully I've said it back of how it was. Hopefully it's not too low. Hopefully it's not too high. high so. Yeah. Anyway, let's let's get back to it, shall we? My head was starting to hurt from all this thinking. My head's starting to hurt from my webcam not operating the way I wish it to. Mm. <sighs> Suddenly I noticed both Yomogi and Yuni letting out a, a groan similar to mine. <laughs> Until they were looking at a portable radio, they were holding and scrutinizing it carefully. Feeling revitalized, they inquired. What happened? What happened? What happened? Why do men always recklessly try to take things apart? <laughs> the monkey seemed somehow cheerful and took a survival knife from his breast pocket. He tried to unscrew the radio using his knife's edge, but the knife was too large in the first place, so it was a fierce battle. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Having expressed his disappointment, Uni returned the radio to his pocket. Too bad they don't have the professor there from Gil Gilligan's Island to uh, help him out. That'd be an interesting. Uh... You know, actually, I mentioned this in. Uh... I think I mentioned it in Ever 17. I may not have, but. It would be interesting if that had <laughs> been. Kind of like a crossover, you take the characters out of it and then you put the uh, Gilligan's Island characters into that situation and see see what happens. That would be a very strange thing, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. But, you know, they did get stranded, so it's kind of related. And with his hand in his pocket, he put on a smile as if he were playing a trick. He rushed over and brought his face close to mine. He said, lowering his voice and winking. Pulling my hand, he led me toward the basement storeroom. Okay. There's something strange about Uni. I think. I, I, don't, I don't know what it is, though. Maybe because it says something about trickster in the beginning and there's definitely something going on that's not normal here. When we reached the underground storeroom, Uni glanced around to confirm that no one else was there. And then with a smile that looked as if he'd come up with a good prank, he put his hand in his pocket. In the palm of his hand were two candies. Oops. Tonby probably refers to Mayazumi. Thought it'd be unfair to the other two upstairs, but Fuyukawa Kokoro's body was hungry. It's not like we can break up hard candy and divide it between us. Oh, 
メロン味とパイン味があるんだよそうねYou want the red peel or the blue peel? Pick. <laughs> I don't know why that reminds me of that. Yeah, I'm, I highly doubt it has anything to do with it. I doubt it's a reference. But it's funny that you have to choose. Well, melons. Thumbs up, I guess. So, yay, melons. <laughs> <laughs> Spare time, uh, watch the series. He he would like my decision here. <laughs> oh, didn't realize that was a high class thing to choose. Actually, I'm not, wasn't aware that was a high class thing, a classy thing to do. You place the hard candy firmly in my hand. Somehow it felt as if we were in a candy store. Unwrap the candy and toss it into my mouth. It may have been a melon taste artificially produced using sweeteners, but it was very delicious. And he smiled while popping the pineapple candy into his mouth. Wasn't that information revealed in another place? As in not there where they're at? Something's up with uni. Certified pedigree of cucumber haters. Okay. Wasn't aware there was such a group, but hopefully they're, you know, have fun at rallies. I don't know. <laughs> Wait, is he talking about the cucumbers? Because he's talking about the cucumbers. They both throw the candy around in their mouths and smile. He's asking her a bunch of other stuff. This is weird. So, may as well just throw that one in. Try to throw up her loop to get her to agree to something she didn't think she was. Yeah. I... Wait, what did I just say? Did I say yeah? What do you say? Did you say that? Did Well, I didn't say yeah. Like he's asking about some weird like honey bees come from outer space. I was just, you're a kid, I was saying, yeah, why not? Sure honey bees come from space. But wait, no, 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 we're not getting married. <laughs> huh? Ima, nante o shaimashta? Kekon shio te ita on the doshte so naru wake? My face turned red as I replied. You need sudden request. They panicked me and I was suddenly angry.
せっかーもう冗談なのにそこまで無気にならなくたっていいじゃん冗談にも程があるの<笑>そっかなでも仮に私とユニが結婚したとしたら私はクスだ心になるのかそうとは限らないよ知らないの夫婦別姓の法案2008年に可決されたじゃん The dual surname they all let's find out what that means. When the approval of the bill in 2008, married couples may decide to use either partner surname or retain separate family names. That's been a thing for longer than that, hasn't it? Or has it? I'm, I'm, well, I'm pretty sure it's been around for quite a bit longer than that. Then again, it might be different over in Japan. Well, I don't really know of very many people who. I don't think I know of anybody who. Yeah, I don't think I know of anybody personally who's done that. I know, I know, like Hollywood people do that all the time, but. Hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's people been able to do that for quite a while here in America. Hmm. Anyway. Now they mentioned it, that's right. When I get married, I want to change my name to be the name the same as my spouse's. It's a dream of mine. Okay. After a moment of friendly chatter, I gathered my resolve and decided to ask him. Say this is there another you in the world are, are you a clone do you have somebody that's completely identical to you somebody they could cast in a star wars movie in a prequel to star wars movie that's pretty direct and if uh never seven taught us anything yeah it's because it taught us that it's a sensitive subject um so perhaps that's not something we should just be like, blah, blah, clone, are you? So we're going to mention twin. It's kind of a same question, but a little bit more tactfully and disguisefully. Yuni, Yuni exists as two people. The simplest solution would be as if he would be if he were a twin. If he were a twin, that would take care of the contradiction of witnessing him both as Fia and here. However, <laughs> seems things don't always work out so easily in this world. I did leave it open for him to not say that, though. So, I don't have a twin. I'm not saying if I'm a clone or not. So, but if he'd say, but if he'd ask him if he'd. You know, had a clone, or if he was a clone, then then again, he might not be that. He might not be a clone. He might be the original uh, person. And the other person will be the clone. So technically, he could answer that negative either way. When you think about it, and get technical, he places his hand on the ladder, grinning like the Cheshire Cat. I just said that Uni looked up at me with a glance that gave me chills. Yep, there's definitely something with him. You know, he's uh he's freaking me out. Now he's not freaking me out too bad, but he's definitely freaking Coco out. My heart started beating harder at his strangely seductive way of speaking. My cheeks reddened ever so slightly. Well, if I check, the authorities will prove whether or not I am. <laughs> it's 
what she could say. My money would be on jail time. <laughs> yeah, that's... He's definitely acting strange. But he's been watching current television too much. It's always possible. He apologized and teasingly stuck out his tongue. And keeping one hand on the ladder, he pushed his hair back with the other. He did it as if he were some female judo athlete. It's a very detailed uh, way of describing a hair thing, I don't know. Putting out the clothing on at his chest. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. An oddly precocious smile was on his face. Uni said those last few words and climbed up the ladder. And be honest, asking if he was a twin was probably not the... It's a pretty silly question when you think about it. What she could have said was, do you have a brother? Which would be, uh, yeah, I have a twin brother. And maybe a sister or something. Yeah, something like that, you know. Do you have, do you have a brother or sister? But yeah, I have, a, I have a couple sisters and a twin brother, you know. That would be a logical uh, question and response, she could have said. No, I don't have a tw twin. But if I was born as a twin, I'd probably say, yeah. Me and my twin bro. Yeah, I have a sister and a twin. Twin bro. Something like that. Did I say bro, really? I highly doubt it. I don't know why I even said bro. But, uh, that'd be a more logical way to put the question than just, Hey, you got a twin? That's a really specific thing to ask. There's a single reason I had thought he had a twin. Because I had witnessed two unis. Does have a twin? How else is it possible to encounter the same person in two places? Both the shelter cabin and Sphia. Mm. I had unconsciously crunched the candy into tiny pieces while pondering. I don't want to take my time eating it. I rolled the candy that had become as small as a grain around the top of my tongue and enjoyed the fruit flavor. And then I realized... Yeah. I talked about them when we were eating breakfast at Sphia. Other than that time, I, I've talked about which foods I hate. In other words, does that mean that the uni that I had breakfast with at Sphia and the uni that just gave me candy held the same memories? Just a moment ago, I was thinking something similar. About the rela relationship between memory and the brain. About the personality jumping... Jumping to somewhere else in the world. My heart jumped when I realized one possibility. Was Uni experiencing personality exchange just like us? Whenever Sasaru and I underwent a personality exchange, perhaps Uni's personality was going in, undergoing an exchange as well. I can't say whether it's at the same time or not. However, it was at least certain that Uni had been Transferring between this shelter cabin and Sphia like we were. The uni that heard me speak at Sphia had jumped over here. But how can uni be both here and there? Uh, both here and in Sphia. In Satoru, said in my case, we, we exchange bodies. Perhaps in uni's case, he occasionally gets the same body. No sense. I was amazed at the silliness of my own idea. As any memory remains continuous between the shelter cabin and Sphia, maybe his personality was jumping like ours were, or so I dedu deduced. However that, de <clears throat> however, that deduction didn't provide any answers about the mysterious phenomenon of seeing Uni in both places. Uni said that he wasn't a twin. If that's the case, and having an, ident an, ident an identical body over on the other side is impossible, isn't it? Wait, wait. 
She said Uni even had two bodies at the same time. Might be that I'm that I'm simply misunderstanding things. When I'm at Spia, I have no idea what the situation is in the shelter cabin. Here's something that she should realize. Uh, Yamogi and uh, Mayuzumi are not acting that weird about Uni. Acting weird about Kokoro, act of uh, her uh, personality changing. So uh, they're doing that. I would think that they would be reacting to a whole different kid showing up. You know what I mean? Ah, oh, hey, Uni. I see a uh, uh, Billy just left. <laughs> you know that they would have they would have a stronger reaction to that. So. But, here's an idea. If it's a personality exchange that's going on with Uni, perhaps it is a clone that he's exchanging personalities with. It's the perfect crime of sorts. Um, you know, they would both have the same exact bodies. But then again, I don't know if that would be the case because somehow time travel seems to be a thing in this because of the whole newspaper article thing so yeah it's I don't know what's going on I don't know what's going on that's the summary of everything I've said up to this point I don't know what's going on <laughs> I'm just throwing words out I'm hoping a few of them stick in the right places to where that'll be the case at the end, but probably not. When I'm in the shelter cabin, I have no idea what the situation is at Spia. Which means that, which means, and this is the very most, this is at the very most a hypothesis. What Uni is experience, it, experiencing is, to borrow a word from science fiction, teleportation, is it not? I don't think that's it. I just don't buy it. I'm just not able to purchase that idea. The act by which an object or person by use of power such as ESP moves instantaneously to another place also referred to as instant instantaneous movement. Or as Goku would say, instant tra transmission. That'd be a cool uh, power to have. Moreover, can it be considered that at the same time that my person personality transfers, both Uni's personality and body transfer as well? It just doesn't make any sense to me. In other words, Satoru do doesn't meet with Uni. Uni is, con is constantly by my side. No, he's not. Because, uh... When he's, when he's specifically saying Yukido Kun or something like that in the Spia, seems like he's referenced Satoru directly. Feels like it anyway. On top of that unexplainable phenomenon, to pile on even more mysterious logic, a cruelly distorted thought came to me. Right now, I can only I can think of only one possible explanation for the events happening around me. If there's a way to verify it. It would be best to just ask Uni. But I wonder, Uni hasn't even hasn't shown any signs of being confused. You'd usually want to consult with others if you fall into a situation where you're teleporting between places. Hey guys, just out of curious curiosity, how long have I been standing here? I think I was just in a city a few miles away. I was like, I was like sitting on the toilet, doing my business. Next thing I know, I stand right here in that club. Luckily, my pants were up, so I don't, I don't get it. I want to be in a nightclub, but I'm just choosing random words. <laughs> but uh. I don't know, maybe you would ask somebody that, but you'd realize how insane you were sounding as soon as the words tumbled out of your mouth. 
people would think that about you too. So, uh, that would be a re but that would be a reason not to just go around mentioning that. Until I get my hands on some solid proof, I hold off on asking any. Those are my thoughts. I won't confuse them unnecessarily. Because we're on the brink in an extreme situation here, which could be called a disaster. Oh, just once. Oh, dang it, that was twice. Ow, that hurts my neck to do still once. But anyway, yeah, that's it's bring up a whole lot of questions. I'm enjoying this, though. I'm 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 really enjoying not knowing what is the case. I like being in the dark and throwing my, you know, just being able to consider all the, uh, you know, all the possibilities. That was the uh, one thing I thought was really missing in Ever Seven because I was able. To, kind of guess a, a bit of it though then again the intention of the game the point of the game wasn't really to be as uh what's the word um not suspicious suspenseful suspenseful is the word suspicious it's a completely different meaning fairly different meaning kind of in the same genre of words suspicious Suspenseful. Kind of in the same genre. The mood. Mood words. But, uh, but yeah, anyway. I do hope you folks enjoyed this episode. I shall see you in the next one. Farewell there, folks.